Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing a little bit of work on my 730D. This is an E65 model, obviously E65, E66, and both the same, obviously just the length is different. However, mine's got the uh, M57 engine, which is the six cylinder, three litre diesel. And uh, I've got a bit of a problem. Basically, the crank pulley has failed. Now, their um, harmonic uh, balancing pulleys and they're mounted with rubber, basically. And over time, the rubber fails, perishes, and the pulley breaks. So what I've got to do is I've got to replace it in order to be able to drive the car. Now, new pulley in this big yellow box here. Um, at the same time, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be replacing all the tensioners and everything. I've got new tensioners. I've got uh, idler wheels. And I've also got um, brand new belts, obviously. This is the auxiliary belt or serpentine belt. And this is the new one for the AC compressor. And I've got a little tool in order to um, remove the belt from the AC because as you can see here it's a stretch fit but more on that later anyway welcome to the channel thanks for stopping by Okay, as you can see, what we need to do is we need to make ourselves a little bit of room. So what I'm going to do is things like the plastic panels and stuff like that all need to come off and take basically as much of it out of the way as I can in order to improve access uh, down, uh, down the front of the engine. Um, because space is quite tight, especially on these six cylinder engines. If you've got a four cylinder uh, M47, which is very, very similar, and the process for this is very, very similar, um, you probably have a lot more, uh, a lot more room because obviously it sands two cylinders. So what I'll do, I'll then um, take all these bits off and then I'll bring you back in once we're ready to start actually looking at the engine. Okay, as you can see, I've taken off a few panels. Uh, obviously the panel off the top of the car, the, uh, the trim panel that was sitting over the top of the radiator. But I've also taken um, this middle section of the slam panel off and another trim that sat over the top of the radiator off. Now the reason for that was because I want to remove the fan shroud and you can't take that off without removing those. So it, it's, it's fairly easy. It was just a, a bunch of T20 and T30 bolts and it all came apart dead easy. Right, what we want to do now is we need to remove the viscous fan. Now, um, in order to do that, we need 32 mil spanners. Now, on the later models, such as this, um, there's, ha there's actually um, the capability to use two spanners uh, in order to remove it. On early models, such as like the E36, E46, um, they don't give you that luxury. So you, you have to basically try and shock it off because you, you can't put two spanners on it. Now, um, this is actually a viscous fan spanner. And as you can see, it's really, really thin. And that helps you get it in. It's 36 mil one end, 32 the other. So let's get the 32 mil on the hub on the water pump. And then with the other 32, we'll fit that onto the actual coupling itself. Now, it's important to note with these, they are not conventional left-hand thread. They're actually right-hand. So make sure you go as if you're doing up a conventional thread. Um, and as you can see, that was fairly easy to undo. And once we've cracked it, we can actually just spin it off like this, as you can see it just spins off. So what I'll do, I'll keep going until such time as it's all the way off. And then we should be able to take the shroud and the fan all the way up. There we go, there's the, there's the fan. And here is the shroud. Right, what I've forgotten is just down here, we've got this cable here and also the connector for the fan itself. Take that off, recover my fan, and there's another clip holding this cable. Let's just pop it out. We should be pretty good then. Right, let's have a look at what's going off here. Okay, so what we've got to do, in fact, is we need to, oh, there's a radiator hose going across the bottom as well. There we are. Right, there's the fan. Pop that down there. 
and here we go. Right, what we need to do is just remove this from the shroud and it's just a case of getting a screwdriver in there and just pulling the clip back. Okay, as you can see on this little tang, you've got two little teeth that stick out and that is what retains it on here. Pull that in and then it simply slides downwards. Right, we can pop that to one side and again, we can pop this to one side and move on to the next step, which is going to be um, removing the belt. Now, if you look at the, the, uh, the pulley down here, you can see all this rubber. And that is from, obviously, failure of the pulley. And as you can, if you look at this, I can physically move it. In fact, I can shake it backwards and forwards. And obviously you shouldn't be able to do that. So, um, symptoms of this were, um, well, there was a few, to be fair. Firstly, you could smell the rubber. You could smell burning rubber, obviously because of the friction. Um, and we were getting things like um, no power steering um, and the car was complaining about the fact that there was an alternator fault because obviously with this pulley slipping um, obviously the engine was running as, as, at, at its uh, regular speed but the pulley wasn't being turned at crank speed it was basically slipping on the end of the crank so it wasn't driving any of the pulleys at the speed that they need to be um, driven so Obviously it wasn't charging, the power steering wasn't operating as it should and obviously the, the cooling system wouldn't have been, um, the, the water pump would not have been pushing fluid around the system so that's another thing to bear in mind. Um, luckily I didn't actually break down, I actually made it home um, so that was, uh, that was a bit of a bonus. Right, let's move on to getting this belt off. Okay, what we need to do first is we need to remove the AC belt because the AC belt is in front of the uh, serpentine belt. So that needs to come off before we can do anything. Now, obviously I'm gonna have problems here because what I need to do is I need to rotate the crank pulley, but because the hub and the actual pulley itself are separated, they're not actually joined together. I am gonna experience difficulty. Um, I've got a tool for getting this off. I'm not gonna go into details about this. Um, I've actually done a video on removing stretch belts. I'll link it at the top right now. Um, but I'm, I'm going to need, um, this is going to be a bit of a faff because uh, obviously I have a tool in order to rotate the crank. This, um, this tool here is out of a set of locking tools that um, I've actually got for the N47 engine. Um, and basically on the end of the crank there's four bolts that hold the crank pulley onto the crank. That sits over it and just rotates the crank, simple as that. On uh, M47 engines it's generally just one big, one big bolt. Um, so you don't need any special tools, you just use regular socket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to whip that belt off. I'm not going to go into the details of it here. I'll whip it off um, and then uh, we can look at the serpentine belt. Okay, as I anticipated, um, the outer part of the pulley just span and span. No matter what I did, um, it wasn't going to come off uh, in, the, in the intended manner. So I, I ended up just cutting the belt. This is getting replaced with a new one anyway, so it's irrelevant. Um, cutting it off is gonna be the, obviously the easiest option if you're replacing it. Um, but um, what we need to do now is we need to move on to the serpentine belt. And in order to get that off, what we need to do is release this, the, the tension on the belt with, uh, with this tensioner. Uh, now this is sprung, we're gonna be replacing this and the tensioner behind it. They're a bit of a pain to get into because we actually have to remove the power steering pump and possibly the alternator in order to get to the tensioner because it's held on the back, uh, on the back side of the, uh, the lower part of the block. Um, but we'll come on to that shortly. So what I'll do, I'll grab the right size spanner and we'll get that off. Okay, 24 mil spanner. Obviously you can use a socket and a ratchet for this if you want to, but you get it on the flats on the front end of the tensioner and all you do is you at rotate it anti-clockwise like so and as you can see the belt is now loose we can take it off from anywhere we want and then allow it to reset itself and now the belt can simply be pulled off all of the pulleys and taken out the car right let's have a look at this this one actually doesn't look in terrible condition. There's no cracking. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. But I've got a new one anyway. So we are going to be replacing it. Now, one thing uh, worth noting is with the M30 engine, 
there's two sizes of belt. Um, I think this one's a 2160 mil and I think it's a 2080 mil is the other one. So the other one is ever so slightly shorter. Now that depends upon whether your car's got um, dynamic drive or not. Now, if it's got dynamic drive, your power steering pump will look like this and it'll be positioned here. Um, Cause obviously the power steering pump is what supplies the fluid pressure to operate the active anti-roll bars. If you don't have, um, if you don't have dynamic drive, what you'll find is you'll have a power steering fluid reservoir sat here in its place and the power steering pump will probably be down here where my AC one is. Um, the AC will be over this side and the alternator will be up here. Um, so bear in mind if you've got power, if you've got um, dynamic drive, you need the longer belt of the two that will be shown on real OEM. I'll um, I'll take a little snippet of it and I'll put it up on the video now so you can see the two sizes. I think I've got the sizes right. I'm pretty sure it was 2160 and 2080 um, or, or very close to those. But yeah, obviously I need the longer belt. So it's worth um, worth bearing in mind because generally the uh, the motor factors won't, won't be able to tell you. Um, so uh, what I actually had to do was come out and actually measure mine myself to be certain um, of uh, which way it was I needed. Okay, so now we've got... Um, now we've got the belt off, we can move on to the next step. Okay, here we are. Here is the failed pulley, it came off in my hand. Um, as you can see, the rest of the, the, rest of the pulley has been um, it's still on the crank. Um, and this centre hub here is where the four bolts live. And you can see it's completely just separated. The, uh, the rubber's separated from the metal. Um, happens. I mean, this car's done 140,000 miles, I think it is now, and this is probably probably original um, I'm not 100% sure um, but yeah it's uh, well well goosed as they say so what we need to do now is obviously we need to get the old uh, the old pulley off and that's probably going to be a bit of a pain so what I'm going to do I'm going to go and get uh, a couple of tools out and then we'll give it a go right then what we need to do obviously now is we need to uh, undo the crank um, the bolt holding the pulley onto the end of the crank. Now, all that's going to happen is the uh, the engine will just turn over. Um, and uh, being an automatic, it's not like we can just put this in a high gear um, and put some chocks behind the wheels to stop it moving. Um, what we need to do is we do actually need to lock the, uh, the engine in position. So, uh, in order to do that, it's actually fairly simple, believe it or not. What we need to do is look with my torch. We need to look down here. Now, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera. But there is a little plug there's quite a bit of oil down here um, i've got my finger on it right now um, if if it doesn't show up what i'll do i'll turn the torch directly on it there that little plug now um, if it like i said if it doesn't uh, show up on the camera then I, I will take a picture and i'll put it up now but if we pull that plug out it'll leave a hole and what we can do is we can fit a tool in there which will lock into the flywheel and there's loads of little holes in the flywheel and basically what we're going to do is we're going to fit this in that hole and then we'll rotate the engine until such time as this drops into one of the holes and it will lock the crank in position and then we'll be able to undo the uh undo the bolts so what we need to do first is i need to pull that little plug out which can be a bit of a can be a bit of a pig um sometimes you might need a yeah, I think I'm going to need a screwdriver or something to lever her out. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of room down here to be able to show you what I'm doing. But I've got the plug out anyway. <clears throat> Let me recover it before it falls somewhere. And there it is. That's what we're looking for. Um, it's it's quite hard to see because there's a mild oil leak down there. There's evidence of a mild oil leak, nothing too drastic. But basically, that is the starter motor. Look directly below the starter motor for something that looks like that, and that's what you're looking for. Now, this tool is out of my little kit. What I'll do, I'll link the kit in the description so you can go and buy one yourself. It's not expensive. I think it was less than 20 quid. Um, but it does a, wide, a fairly wide range of engines, to be fair. Um, and we're gonna use this in that hole to lock the flywheel now as you can see it's got a little stub on the end uh, and that hole um, will match the hole on the flywheel and this uh, diameter here matches the hole on the um, on the housing so what we need to do is put this in rotate the crank and then but apply a little bit of pressure to this so it's going to be a bit awkward uh, but apply a little bit of pressure and rotate the crank 
two or such times is you feel the tool like basically fall into the hole and you, you'll notice that the crank won't turn. Simple as that, pretty straightforward. You can of course use a drill bit. Um, what I'll do, I will um, measure this, uh, this diameter. If I had to guess, I'd say that's probably about eight or nine millimeters. Um, you could use a drill bit, put a drill bit through the hole if you wanted to, but obviously I've got the tool, so I'm going to use it. I'll, um, I'll uh, measure that and I'll put the, the size up at the bottom right now. So, in order to use it, what we need to do is we need to insert this into that hole. Again, I wish I wish I was able to show you this a bit better. Apologies for the aeroplanes flying around. They're uh, obviously exercising today. Um, hopefully you can see that. I've got the tool in the hole, but it's not engaged with the flywheel at the moment. What I need to do is obviously I need to rotate the crank and apply a bit of pressure. So um, let me go and grab my ratchet and that's what we'll do next. Okay, as you can see, I'm cuddling my engine. I've got my right hand on the tool for the flywheel and my left hand on the, uh, on the ratchet for the crank. And what we're gonna do is we're going to turn it. Now, always turn the crank in the direction of operation, which is clockwise. Never go anti-clockwise because it can actually take the slack off the chain um, against the tension and we don't really want to do that. So just rotate it. And I don't know if you heard that, but it made like a little knocking sound and that is the tool engaged. Now, if I pull on this crank, it's not turning anymore, that's because I have locked it in place. So there we are, that is the crank locked. And what I can do now is I can take the tool off and now we will be able to undo those bolts. Right, the, uh, the crank pulley bolts are E12 Torx um, and I've got this uh, breaker bar here. And what we need to do is, in fact, it'd probably be easier to get it on there first, like so. Get me breaker bar on right so and then crack them off there we are they're not too tight these are actually done up to 40 newton meters and then an additional 120 degrees um so nothing too dramatic probably ends up being about 80 newton meters altogether and all i'm doing cracking them all off there's four all together I think I've got them all. It's hard to see which ones I have and haven't done. Right, there we are. So now we can switch to our ratchet if needs be. I think we'll be okay. They will feel fairly loose. Right, let me get all four of these um, bolts out and then I'll bring you back in uh, when we pull the pulley off. There's all four bolts out. As you can see, they're quite long. And now we should be able to pull the rest of the pulley off. And there we go. There is the remainder of the pulley. And that is fit for the scrap. Right then, what we could do now is we can fit the new one onto the end of the crank, which is the reason why, um, obviously, the, the failure of this pulley is the reason uh, for doing this job in the first place. Obviously we have got other things to do, like the tensioners, etc, etc. But this is the main job, and you can see the four, uh, the four bolt holes. Um, the brand new pulley does come with four new bolts, so obviously that's what we're going to fit. Okay, the pulley I've bought here, as you can see, is by GT Automotive. Um, I actually fitted a GT Automotive pulley to my uh, M47 engine that I used to have quite some time ago. Um, which suffered a similar failure, uh, obviously they all do, uh, eventually. And here is the new bolts. And yeah, the, uh, the one I fitted last time was absolutely perfect, absolutely no dramas whatsoever. And here are the brand new bolts. So, what we need to do is remove it from its package. It's quite heavy and unwieldy, but obviously, as you can see, this one, in a darn sight better condition than the one we removed. So, 
let's uh, get this on the front of the crank. Now, ouch, that was me, Ed. There are no, uh, there's no keys or anything on this. You don't need to worry about the orientation that you, uh, that you fit it. Um, just, just get it on, get the bolts in. Now, it's really difficult to see how it's orientated at the moment. So it's a bit of guesswork as to the, as to the, uh, all right, there we go. Feels like we're in, we've got one of the bolts in the hall. Next, if you've got a little mirror, you can uh, probably make fairly light work of this. Get all four bolts in. What we'll do is we'll get them all started before we uh, tighten anything down and then we can look at talking them in. So let me go and uh, grab the tools I need and we'll get these tightened down. Right then, all the uh, all four bolts are, are up to touch basically. Now what we need to do is we need to torque them in to spec. So um, what I'm going to do is torque them all 40 newton meters and then once all four are torqued to 40 newton meters what we need to do is go back round again and add another 120 degrees and we'll do that with the uh, breaker bar um so yeah torque them all up we'll then add another 120 degrees to each one and then that is them taught to spec so what i'll do i'll go along and i'll do it and then once uh once we're all talked i'll uh, i'll bring it back in um before we move on to the next step One, ah, ah, ah. What I'm doing, I'm doing them opposites just to make sure that the crank sits nice, uh, the crank poly, sorry, should I say, uh, sits nice and flat on the, on the end of the crank. Right, I'll get all of these torqued in and then I'll bring it back. Right, that is all four bolts torqued up and the additional 120 degrees um, has been applied to each one. It does feel like, it feels weird and it doesn't feel like um, you should be doing it, but don't worry about it, they're stretch bolts and that's what they're designed to do. So an extra 120 degrees, perfect. Right, if all you're doing is replacing the crank uh, pulley, then we're done. We would just need to put the belt on. However, what I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to move on to replacing the tensioners um, and that's a bit more involved. What we do need to do now though, we don't need the, uh, we don't need the crank locked anymore. So what we need to do, come down here and remove our tool. Now that is very, 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 very important. Make sure you don't forget that you've got the tool in there because if you uh, try and turn the engine over with the flywheel locked, you will do some damage. Don't do that, make sure you remove the tool and obviously refit the little plug um, back into the hole from whence it came, which I'm having to do by feel. And there we go. Right, what we need to do now is look at the tensioners. Now, in order to get to the tensioners, um, the power steering pump needs to be moved out of the way and as does the alternator because it's right down there uh, you can see the back end of it um, and it's pretty dark so what i'll do i'll go and grab my torch and we'll have a look at what it is we're actually going to be replacing okay so looking down here uh, between the block and the power steering pump what i'm shining on now this black uh, cylinder thing you can you can see is actually the reverse of the tensioner now um, as you can see there's not a lot of room to get into it um, it's actually bolted in from the front of the block um, so removing the bolts is easy however actually removing the tensioner from the engine is not because although the tensioner itself is bolted to the block from the front the tensioner um, pulley uh, is on like a, a little frame that goes through the block through the tensioner and then is bolted from this side So we do need access to the back end of it in order to take that bolt out So we can take the tensioner out from the front and then obviously take those bolts out and then remove the tensioner um, And basically what we're going to be doing is making uh, making ourselves space to do just that 
So what I'll do, I'll grab the new tensioner and I'll um, kind of show you how they go together uh, and you'll get a better idea in your head of what it is we're actually trying to achieve. What I've got here, I've got the tensioner and the tensioner pulley. Uh, the tensioner I've got is a Schaeffler one. Uh, again, I've used these before and they're, uh, they're pretty good quality uh, in my experience. Um, the, tensioner, uh, the tensioner pulley I've got is a Febby Bilstein one. And basically, this is what goes through the block and this is what we were rotating uh, earlier on when we uh, took the belt off. Now, the way it works is there's a massive torsion spring inside here and it basically goes in like uh, like so and a bolt goes through this is the one I was talking about that comes from the other side and these are the two from the block but that when you when you rotate that what you're doing is you are rotating it against the torsion spring inside this unit and that's what applies the, uh, the tension to the belt so what we're going to do is obviously remove both of these and as I said before, we need access, so I need to get the power steering pump off. Uh, now the power steering pump is held in by only, uh, only a few bolts. There's um, a little bracket here on the side of this pipe. Um, a couple of 10 mil bolts in there. A bolt there and another one at the bottom, the same as that one. And then a bolt here that goes through into the uh, oil filter housing. Um, then there's a bolt there and um, I think that may be it for the power steering pump. Then that should be able to be moved out of the way. Um, I'm not going to disconnect the lines because obviously we're then having to deal with fluid and I'm not going to bother. Um, we should have enough flex in the lines just to move it out of the way um, over here um, to give us a bit more access. So what I'll do, I'll whip all those bolts out that I mentioned and then we'll move the power steering pump out of the way. And then I will bring you back for the next step. Okay, as you can see, we've got the power steering pump off and moved to one side. Um, I've got the top bolt off of the alternator, and all I want to do is I want to loosen the bottom bolt on the alternator, and then the alternator should swing out the way, um, just enough for me to be able to get access. But the problem is, the bolt, the lower bolt for the alternator, is covered by the idle pulley. Now, we've got a brand new idle pulley right here, so that's got to come off anyway, and it's this one here. This one just here, so I'm gonna crack the bolt out and pull it off. And there we go. There is the old idler pulley removed. So now I've got access to the lower bolt for the alternator, which is just down here. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, that's what I want to I'm not going to take that one out, all I want to do is just loosen it enough so that I can swing the alternator out of the way to give me a bit more space down here. And then what I should be able to do is undo the, uh, the bolt on the back of the tensioner, as I explained earlier on, but the oil filter housing is in the way of that bolt. So what I'll be able to do, I'm going to get a spanner onto it, so what I need to do though is loosen the bolt, pulling the tensioner, away and just keep going keep going keep going until such time as the uh the, the the tensioner itself is is out of the out of the block leaving the bolt in and then i can take the two bolts off of the front of the tensioner unit itself so what i'll do i'll get all of that done and then i'll bring you back in okay as you can see i gave myself enough room to be able to get into the tensioner um, and the little bolt at the back is just a 10 mil and that bolt is what holds the tensioner through the block into the, um, the tensioner unit itself. So basically there isn't enough room to actually remove the bolt at the back here because the oil filter housing is in the way but what you do, what you can do is just basically keep pulling this forward and undoing it, pulling it forward, undoing it, pulling it forward and eventually you'll get to this point. And there we are, there is the old tensioner removed and you can see what the bolt was going into. Okay, this little, this little disc here, which I can't get off, I'll have to leave that off. Uh, that needs to be removed as well um, because that comes on the new one. It's just a little, like a little dust, uh, dust seal basically. Right then, what we need to do now is we need to remove the, uh, remove the tensioner. And to remove the tensioner, there's two bolts holding it into the block, one just there, one just here and one is recessed uh, around, around, where is it, around here, there we go, 
that one just there in, inside this little recess. We need to take both those bolts out and then the tensioner will be free to be removed. So let me crack them off and then uh, I'll bring it back. Right, we've got both bolts out. What I do need to do now is just reach down in here and recover the old tensioner. Now, there isn't a great deal of room to get my hand in, but there's just enough to be able to get it out, hopefully. It's a bit tight for space. Now, what I want to do, because I don't want to lose it, is I need to try and get the, get the bolt as well. There's the bolt. This is the two bolts for the tensioner itself. And then get the, get the tensioner out. Now, there isn't a great deal of room to maneuver in here at all. So it's gonna be a case of just wiggling it until such time as she comes out. Okay, there we are. There is the old tensioner out. Now, what I ended up having to do was removing the lower bolt for the alternator just to give me enough room to maneuver um, that out because it was incredibly tight. So the bottom bolt came out um, and then it was it, I had all the room I needed. What I did do though, because I was moving the alternator away from the block, just, just in case the connections on the back of the alternator would touch in anything else, I've disconnected the battery just to be safe. So what we can do now is get the new tensioner fitted. Okay, so we want to get the new uh, the new tensioner in but as i said before we're not going to have room to get the bolt in so i put the bolt in um beforehand and then we're just going to maneuver it down into position back behind the block okay as you can see the tensioner is now in position behind the block however it is not bolted into place yet as you can hear it still moves around now what we want to do now is grab our um, new tensioner wheel and insert it through the block and get it in position on the tensioner and there we go that is now in place now what we've done there is it made our life easier if we get the tensioner on and then um, bolt it up it makes it really really difficult to get the tensioner wheel to go into it uh, the shaft of it to go into the aperture on the tensioner um, it just makes it really really difficult because if it's not quite central it'll just you, you'll never get it in so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get the little 10 mil bolt on the back started that'll hold that in position so it doesn't come out again and then what we'll do is we'll wiggle it around we'll get the two bolts in that hold the tensioner and then we'll, we'll be golden so i'll get that in um then what i can do is the alternator i can bolt that back up the power steering pump i can bolt all that back up then we just need to replace this old idler wheel and then we'll be in a position to put the belt back on. So what I'll do, I'll get all of that put together. That'll probably take me about 20 minutes or so uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll be good to get the belt on. Right then, that is the alternator and a power steering pump put back in, the tension are all done and all good. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that the, um, the tensioner itself, uh, if I grab it, here's the old one. One thing I didn't mention is the fact that that isn't central between those two holes. So it actually only goes in one way uh, and it's actually that way. So the longer side points down towards the floor. And um, that's, uh, that's the orientation it goes in. If you put it in that way, the hole will not be aligned with the hole in the block. So that's worth bearing in mind. So, so yeah, well then, um, if we put that bit to bed now, that's all done, that's all in. Alternate power steering pump back in and bolted up. All we've got to do now before we can fit the belt is new idler wheel so get the idler wheel back in place where it's supposed to go on the front of the block and we'll get it started and then just tighten her up Do where it needs to be and i'm just going to knit this up and that'll be more than enough and there we go that's all the wheels new pulley 
and new tensioners. Right, let me go grab the belt and we'll get that in. Okay, so everything's on, all buttoned up. All we've got to do now before we can uh, start the car up is fit both the belts. Now, the serpentine belt, the auxiliary drive belt has got to be fitted first because obviously the AC belt sits in front of it. So we'll, um, we'll get that one on first. And obviously all we need to do is um, with a 24 mil spanner or a 20 fill or a 24 mil socket like I've got here is just take the tension off the belt. Now, um, it can be a bit of a pain to remember how it, how it roots. Uh, if you're the, of the forgetful, if you, if you are the forgetful type, might be an idea just to take a picture of the routing or, um, or, or draw, just draw a little diagram, just draw circles for the pulleys and just draw a little diagram of its routing, um, just to help you put it back on. Right, what I'm gonna do, take my brand new belt and what we're gonna do is just feed it through where it needs to go and uh, I'll get it, I'll get it fed all the way around where it needs to be and then um, we'll, we'll mess around with the tensioner afterwards. So, from the water pump down to the idler wheel, then over the alternator, then over the main crank pulley, making sure that she's sat in the pulley correctly and then again up here make sure it's in the pulley correctly and then what we need to do is come down to the water pump and she goes from the water pump up to the power steering pulley now here's our little loop that needs to go round the tensioner so if i put my socket inside that loop Get it on the tensioner and take the take the tension off. I should be able to get the belt over the tensioner. And then there we are, making sure that the belt is aligned correctly. It's not at the moment. She's not quite on that pulley right at the bottom one. So what I'm gonna do is again, just take the tension off and just push her back. And there we are. Everything looks good now. We're on the alternator right, we're on the power steering right, and we're on the water pump right. Okay, everything looks to be aligned. All right, next thing I'll do, I'll get the AC, uh, the AC belt on and then we can fire her up. Okay, there we are. That is the belts fitted. All the new uh, tensioners, idler wheels, pulleys, etc, etc. New, uh, all renewed. All I need to do now is uh, obviously put the fan back on, the fan shroud and the plastics and uh, I can drop the bonnet down and we're done. So yeah, fairly, uh, fairly taxing job. It's taken me a couple of hours altogether and it's ultimately quite fiddly. Uh, had I just been changing the bottom pulley, I'd have had it done in about three quarters of an hour. It really didn't take that long at all. Um, but changing those tensioners is, is, a, is a right swine. So yeah, they're, uh, they're fiddly just because of there's a lack of space. Um, yeah, but given time, obviously uh, you can achieve it. Right then guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll leave uh, links to all the parts I bought in the, uh, in the description if you want to go and check them out. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, hope you find it useful. And I'll see you all again for the next one. Take care, bye bye now.